you guys uh, cut Chris Warren. What was the issue there? What, what was what you guys weren't? Well, we just want to bring James Butler in, and uh, there's certain standards I think that uh, that we have here, and uh, expect our, we expect a certain level of professionalism with our players coming in, and, and uh, you know, fitness-wise expectations that we had, and he didn't meet our fitness expectations, so uh, we decided to make a change. JJ uh, Nelson can move. Yeah. A little bit. That speed element is that part of the attraction? Yeah, that was a big reason as to why we signed him. Uh, one of the faster wide receivers in the league, and uh, uh, he still certainly shows it uh, today. So much has made around what's been around Derek now, what they put around him. Do you feel there's an inherent sense of him to keep proving himself, though? Well, I think that you know he has an expectation again every day uh, of of playing at a high standard and executing at a high level, and. Uh, Certainly, uh, he's happy that we've added some pieces around him, but I don't think that changes his mindset. Uh, he's always going to try to uh, get better every day and, and uh, play at a high level, but it makes it a lot easier uh, when you do surround him with, with, uh, uh, with the better players uh, at every position. I think we've done that. So uh, he's had a good camp. Uh, he had a good off-season OTAs and June mini camps. He had a great start here to training camp. and. Uh, but again, those are the expectations that he has himself and that we have of him as a coaching staff. How do you feel about um, the development of second year players, Colton Miller and uh, Brandon Parker? Great, you know, uh, both the tackles have gained weight, they've gained strength, uh, and really the entire rookie class that we had a year ago, we, we felt good about them when we drafted them and we feel uh, the same way uh, going through their second season. I think they're more confident, they're playing faster because of the confidence level, uh, but we like the growth of all those players. How's that been able to rub off on some of the younger guys, and how's the culture changing because of his presence? Well, again, if you look at our free, all the free agents that we've signed, they're uh, all going to be in uh, major roles on both sides of the football. Uh, we try to bring in guys, you know, again that have won uh, in the National Football League, and Trent Brown's one of them. Uh, but we like the example that really all the free agents have set. He has a lot going for him, but nastiness probably isn't the first thing that people would use to characterize his game. Playing next to Richie, I think nastiness might be the first thing for him. What do you think that could do for Colton just being next to him? I don't know. I, you know, again, uh, everyone has different personality, and uh, you know, uh, you can look at a number of guys. Orlando Pace was not known as a nasty guy, but obviously, certainly he's a Hall of Fame player. Uh, so he'll be himself, but uh, Richie's always going to bring a nastiness to the room uh, in terms of his play, and uh, that's part of the appeal of, of signing Richie. Do you see a difference, you see a difference in, in Colton Miller, that the reserve Colton Miller that you see every day, and, and the, guy, the guy on the field? Does he, does he come out of his shell? In his I think he's pretty real. You know, again, there is a certain amount of... Uh, violence or nastiness uh, just to play the game of football it's not for everybody we say that so uh, and he comes off across as a polite guy and uh, that shouldn't be held against the guy you know his parents raised a, a terrific young man uh, but I think every position at every position it's a physical game uh, certainly offensive lineman when you're hitting someone across from you on every play uh, you know you have to have a mindset of toughness when you strap on the helmet and uh, that's, he's a tough football player, uh, and, and again, guys show it different ways, but don't, don't uh, assume because that he's a quiet guy that he's not a tough football player. I love his line. He's clearly stronger. Is he better equipped to kind of have that more of an edge than going into the second season? Yeah, I think so. Again, it's confidence. It's experience that breeds confidence, and um, he's had a great, you know, that first year, uh, we're, we're happy with how he played as a rookie because we know the experience factor is huge for all that rookie class. and. Uh, He's played 16 games now, as you know, as a as a professional football player. And uh, again, every year the standards change based on that experience. So uh, we're excited where he's at, and we're excited where he's going to be going. Greg, have you ever any kind of update on Antonio? And I know it's only been a couple days, but does the work that you put in with Derek and the other receivers during the OTAs and the prime work does that make this a little easier? Like, you it back in, yeah, it makes it easier. I don't know if you were here for the. Uh, pre-practice, but he was out running around and doing some things uh, today in our walkthroughs. And, uh, you know, with Antonio Brown, there's no such thing as a walkthrough. You know, he goes 100 miles an hour all the time. So uh, I think he's going to be back quickly, and uh, you'll hear more from Mike or John in terms of the, uh, the injury report right now. But but he looks looked good to me today in a walkthrough.
Peterman got a lot of work today. What, uh, what do you see from the backup competition between Glennon and? No, it'll be a competition. That's why yesterday we went with Glennon. Uh, took the you know the first reps with the twos, and today we just switched up with Nate Peterman. So we'll continue to do that throughout camp till somebody separates himself. Josh Jacobs has been uh, taking a lot of direct snaps in the Wildcat in uh, practice. Do you see a big role for him uh, in the Wildcat going forward? Yeah. <laughs> you know that possibly could be something that we do. But another part of that is we just want to make sure that our defense gets a chance to see it because uh, and prepare our defense for those possible looks. But. You know, we'll, we'll look at uh, doing whatever we can to cause problems for opposing defenses, and certainly the Wildcat is, is one of those. So the, uh, the Oak Raiders have historically had uh, training camp in the North Bay. Back in the days of Madden, it was in Santa Rosa. You hear lots of stories about, you know, the guys going out after cur curfew and all that. You know, um, you know, the snake, you know, studying the playbook by the jukebox light. You know, times have changed, I know, but uh, how do you keep your players focused in a, uh, you know, world-class uh, tourist destination such as Napa? I just is a different mindset in today's players, and you can you can talk to a lot of these guys, the alumni that were. We had over 100 alumni uh, that were here, and and I know they were out until the wee hours of the morning, and they would probably tell you they did the same thing when they were players here for a lot of those guys. But it, it's a it's a mindset has changed throughout the league and uh, generations. Certainly the. Uh, uh, the amount of money that these guys have at risk, you know, and playing this football game, that I think the players are just more, so much more aware of taking care of their bodies and making sure that they can uh, extend their career as long as possible by, by staying healthy and, and doing the right thing. So, uh, so certainly in social media has changed a lot of those things, but more than anything, I think the players are just more aware of, of uh, taking care of their bodies. How would you assess Hunter Renfro's performance today, especially when matching against Lamarcus? Yeah, we're real excited. Uh, you know, just taught Lamarcus Joiner. You know, we'd asked him to give give Hunter all he can all he can get. You know, and uh, it's been a good matchup. But uh, we're real happy. Uh, again, we talked about it last spring uh, where he was at OTAs, and uh, again he continued over the summer to work hard and uh, get a better feel for the things that we're going to ask him to do. And he's had a good. Uh, good three days at a rookie mini camp, and he had a good first two days here with the uh, veterans. Is, uh, is Nelson a guy who can line up and play in the slot? Is he versatile enough for what you guys look for from your receivers? Uh, again, we're kind of rotating all those guys. He could be that guy, and some of the things that we like to do with the slot. Again, his the biggest thing with him certainly he got great uh, uh, ball skills in terms of catching a football, and he's got great vertical speed. So uh, if there's things that we'll put in uh, to try to match up his skills. When you have so much new on the offense, especially at two spots up front, how nice is it to have Rodney Hudson, a guy that spent so much time on scheme mastery to help Derek and the entire offense advance and build on what you guys did last year? Yeah, ultimate pro. Uh, obviously can't say enough about Rodney, and, and he's had that same guard with him, you know. Uh, so we're happy with he and Gabe Jackson, their relationship, their ability to communicate to the new guys and the guys on, on both sides of them has been tremendous. But certainly Rodney's the one that gets everything going. Uh, it makes it certainly uh, easier on Derek Carr and uh, what his responsibility is in terms of getting the right plays or getting the right protection. Uh, Rodney's able to do that just as a quarterback would. So uh, it's really been great. No. As you look at the receivers and the defensive backs, they're going in at practice and you kind of contrast with what you have working with last year with you know some guys that were older that aren't even playing this year like Leon Hall and Jordy Nelson that yeah. survived on know-how and such what do you see about the upgrade in terms of physical ability that you have oh it's been tremendous really you're talking about in my opinion to obviously the elite right receiver in the league and AB and and then Tyrell Williams was someone that again I think we talked about last year he's someone we had targeted as the number one receiver because we did not think after the Bills had signed AB that we were going to get him. So we had targeted Tyrell as our top guy, and to get him both was certainly a bonus. And then to get a chance to watch him out here in the one on ones and the, uh, the accumulation of talent that they got on the defensive side of the ball at the defensive back position, some great matchups, and we'll get great competition throughout camp. Virginia Cognito, today he's getting first team reps left guard, but obviously weeks one and two he won't be able to be out there. What's the plan in terms of the right time being to work some of the other guys like Cooper into that mix just to build chemistry with those Yeah, guys? we've done that again. Cooper, Dezel, good. Two guys that will compete, you know, for that spot while Richie's out. But uh, we're trying to get Richie work, obviously, with the ones right now. And, and uh, as camp gets a little bit later, then we'll work those other two guys in. There'll be a little competition there at the left guard spot. But uh, we're really excited about Cooper and, the, you know, the fact that he was out there and we were able to sign him here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, very fortunate on our side uh, of the ball based on Denzel's uh, injury that occurred in the spring. So uh, 
you know, we'll again, Richie will, Richie will go through here first week, week and a half, and then we'll start rolling those other guys through. Time for one more. Anything, guys? Chris? Maybe just ask you about last year when Doug Martin kind of filled in when uh, Lynch had that groin injury and, and another injury this year kind of allowed Martin to come back in. Can you just talk about his possibilities, what his play, and what he's all about? Yeah, again, he's a great pro. We talked about Rodney Hudson, and uh, Doug Martin sets a great example, really, in the room uh, in terms of being a pro and, and out on the field. Uh, and you would see his effort, uh, the enthusiasm he has for the game, his passion for the game. Uh, so we couldn't be more happy than uh, to be able to get Doug Martin back here. A great teammate. I, I don't think you talk to any position group on the team that wouldn't say he's, he's just a great teammate. Uh, and he still, again, possesses, you know, the skill that we need to play running back. He could be an every down back for us. Uh, he's good out of the backfield. He's still got a lot of tread left on his legs. You haven't seen that uh, uh, natural. Uh, decline in skill set for a running back because he you know he's able to you know had a year off and uh, didn't have a lot of wear and tear on his legs so he looks fresh and he's excited to be here and we're excited to have him